Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my shop. Today is November 5th and this is my weekly shop update. So I have been trucking along on the sideboard project thing here. Just kind of finishing up some of the uh, the last major work on it. And then this thing is going to be done. <laughs> so I got the shelving system installed into the lower case. And I am currently in the midst of working on the doors, which is pretty exciting because the doors are the last major bit of work on this thing and then it's just some small details like hardware and like you know door and drawer stops who needs those <laughs> but small things like that so let me give you a look at the shelving system and then we'll take a look at these sweet doors so for the adjustable shelves i opted to go with some wooden standards and for those i'm using these half circle uh kind of cut out standard things I first saw these when I first started woodworking, when I did my first, I guess, refinishing project. That was like the first like thing I did as a woodworker. I refinished a, a hutch, a china hutch, and it had this style of um, adjustable shelves where you have a, basically it's a semi-circle, so it's half a circle, and you have a mating little uh, support piece which supports the shelves. And I hadn't, um, I don't think I've done these before in my own work. Usually when I do um, adjustable shelf uh, wooden standards, I typically use the sawtooth standard, but I figured, you know, for a little bit of variety, you don't really see this too often. I figured we would do this, and uh, I really like the look. It's kind of a fun, fun look, I think. <laughs> and these standards are super easy to make, so that makes them, uh, you know, nice <laughs> as well. The only other kind of weird thing about using these kind of standards as opposed to shelf pins is that the shells just need to be kind of notched around the standards and in my case around the legs so that they meet in there all nice. One other small detail here which doesn't really matter a whole lot is that for the shells I decided to use one long board so I have continuous grain across the whole shelf which is a kind of a fun small detail as well. So with the doors, I'm back to more frame and panel joinery. The, basically the structure of the door is exactly the same as the structure of the side assemblies of the case, more frame and panel, which makes things go pretty quickly. So in here, I've got a haunch tenon. So that haunch fills the groove on the style piece that allows you to run the groove all the way through the piece without having to make a stop cut and just kind of looks kind of cool. You get a little more glue surface down in here and you get a little more width in here which just kind of helps things you know stay aligned and not twist or anything so nothing nothing super crazy here the craziest part is the super uh, crazy figure I'm going to have in these panels so if you're back to when I built the case I had basically two slabs that I resawed into six slices so I have four slices for the doors and two for the side panels so I have a continuous grain wrap around the sides and front of case. So here we have, I guess this would be the left doors. So it's also kind of nice to see now with the frames, I can finally see like how much of the actual panels will be exposed inside those frames. And this is getting pretty darn exciting. And then here's a look at the right side doors. One of the things I did on the doors as well is the center styles where the two doors are gonna meet in the case. I have these out of one wider board, so you have some kind of continuous grain pattern there, which is just another very small, subtle detail. So after I get this edited and posted, I'll be back out here working on these panels. I want to get them down to their final thickness, get them cut to size, because I want to start applying finish on these. I want to get these totally finished before I install them into the frames. So I got to get those done before I can glue up the frames, before I can install them in the case, you know all of those sort of things. So earlier this week, I participated in my first like online auction thing. I've seen this all the time. There are like equipment auctions or like a whole shop closing auction, things like that. And um, this one was not that far from my house. It's a few miles down the road. And I bid on a few things, but I ended up winning this guy, which is going to be really nice here in the shop. This is a little drill organizer. It's a Hewitt uh, drill cabinet. They have different styles. And I think it was like a week and a half ago, maybe Keith Rucker did his little odds and ends video and he had a new one of these, but it was for metric taps, dies and drills. So I didn't actually know these cabinets existed until then. And then 
like a week later, I saw this come up. I'm like, I should probably bid on that because when he shared that cabinet, I'm like, that's a fantastic way to organize these things. And it kind of encourages you to kind of complete the collection and have, you know, one of everything. <laughs> so the three drawer cabinet, it's got all the fractional numbers for all the drill sizes on there. When you pull it open, it's got all the little dividers in here for all the different sizes of drills. And this one came with a whole variety of different sizes already in here. A lot of small ones. There's a few kind of bigger ones, not a whole lot, but I figured, you know, the cabinet's nice and it came with a decent assortment of drills already, uh, which is a nice bonus. Some cobalt ones in here as well, all the way down to 364. So some pretty tiny ones as well. So I thought that kind of added to the value. And having that cabinet to organize all the bits is gonna be a lot better than the current system, which is uh, just throw them in this drawer. And then when you want a bit, you kind of try and find the marking on there. It says what size it is. And of course I have two drawers like that. So I thought a decent place for this, at least for the time being, is right here on the foot of the drill press. And I can transfer all of my drills from my drawer into the cabinet and just kind of further organize my stuff. And getting these like loose twist drip twist bits out of the drawers will give me a little more space for some other stuff in there so it's just a little bit better organized overall but um, pretty excited about this it's weird because it's literally three drawers that holds drill bits but it's really exciting I cannot explain why <laughs> so let's wrap it up to you this week let's take a look at some viewer projects first this week is a wash stand by Robert it's made from rough cut silky oak and bird's eye manor gum, all Australian timber. <laughs> Next this week is a cookie table by John. John used the natural thickness of the cookie in the table. So as you can see in the picture, the cookie is thicker on one side and thinner on the other, which meant that he built a custom base just for that cookie so that the legs are all different lengths to make sure that the top of the cookie actually ends up level. Next this week is a beetle kill kids bed by Eric. It's made from Colorado source Beetle Kill from Mountain Heart Woodworks in Elizabeth, Colorado. It features Morrison tenon joinery, flush mount bed rails, and is finished with tongue oil. Last this week are a set of Maloof inspired dining chairs by Brian. He used mahogany for the main part of the chair, spalted figured maple for the back slats, and African blackwood for the plugs. All the back slats are continuous grain match on both sides and the back slats. He started with two mahogany boards that were around 12 inches wide and 17 feet long and he had no scraps left over. Brian also has a few videos over on his YouTube channel that show the making of these chairs so you definitely want to check those out. So I have a few little announcement type things. So first off this Thursday, George Rondriska will be here in my shop doing his uh, live Q&A that he does for the Woodworkers Guild of America. So that'll be Thursday night. I'll leave links to that so you can check that out on Thursday. Uh, that'll be in the evening here. Uh, I think it's at 7 o'clock Central Time. And I lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah, okay. So <laughs> uh, Maker Central. I will be going to Maker Central once again. Went last year. It was a huge, huge blast. Met a lot of amazing people there. So if you're in the, uh, the UK or you want to travel to the UK and you want some reason to go there, Make Your Central is a fantastic reason to go. <laughs> so I'll be there. That is in May. I'll have dates down below because I don't remember off the top of my head. <laughs> and then lastly, I am also going to be at uh, Weekend with Wood. Uh, I will be presenting there. I have two uh, presentation topics. I'll be doing four of them total. So I'll be repeating each one twice. I'm doing one on working with live edges. So starting with the live edge board and either using the live edge in your project or working around the live edge to remove it, laying out parts, things like that. And then the other one will be on dealing with defects. So working with uh, crazier woods, um, stabilizing things with epoxy, butterflies, bow ties, things like that. Um, just kind of working with the defects or working around the defects. So basically what I do with a lot of my work using all this kind of weird, crazy woods that most people probably wouldn't. <laughs> so I think that's about all for this week. Thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments about anything I talked about today or anything here in my shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy working. <laughs>